All right, camera guy, I'm going to make you work a little bit. I'm going to walk around. Uh, first off, let's give it up for Medi for putting on this conference and everybody, all the organizers and volunteers, because without them, we would not be here today. So let's give it up for them. So uh, what up, API Days? I am Swift, as Medi said. Uh, I'll introduce myself in a second. But today, I'm here to talk to you guys about the nuts and bolts uh, of developer events. Uh, so what exactly does that mean? Well, it means I want to talk to you about marketing. And it's really funny because I'm actually a developer by background. Uh, I do have a CS degree from Rutgers. Uh, but I'm going to talk to you about marketing, which is something that I never thought I would ever find myself in front of a crowd doing. And specifically, I want to talk to you about event marketing. Uh, that event marketing uh, includes all kinds of things. It includes things like hackathons, as Tony mentioned. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about those. It includes things like conferences, like the one that you're at right now. Uh, it includes uh, everything from meetups to conferences, in-person developer events, anything that a developer goes to. Uh, and why is this relevant to you guys? Well, uh, odds are if you're at this conference, you have some kind of API or technical product or you want to talk to developers. Uh, one of the best places to find developers is at events. So uh, I think you guys probably know some of these companies here. These are, are some famous uh, API companies. And I think the reason that they're famous is because they had an amazing in-person event strategy when they started. Uh, and I, I think you can probably think of a ton of other companies that have followed in their footsteps or that have also had their own successful in-person event strategies. Um, but I want to take some of the lessons that uh, you can take from these companies and show you how to apply them um, to your events. Uh, and so we can learn from it, hopefully. And I'll give you some action items to take away at the end. And hopefully, when you're figuring out what events to go to, what events to sponsor, what events to be involved with in any way, uh, or to speak at even in a lot of capacities, uh, maybe you'll have some tools in your arsenal to play with. Uh, and this whole f uh, slideshow is framed in the context of sponsoring an event. And specifically, I'm talking about that because I have a lot of experience working on that over the last two years. So I'm going to talk from that angle. But again, keep in mind that you can take these same principles I'm going to share with you and apply it to which events you attend, which events you speak at, um, which meetups you go to, like whatever. So it's pretty universal, but it's framed in a certain way. Um, so, specifically, the topic that I'm going to talk to you about is how do you evaluate, measure, and get the most out of in-person developer events and marketing opportunities? Uh, so, what does that mean, right? Well, that could be anything from the form of sponsorship to speaking to um, mentoring to whatever, but being involved in developer events. So, who am I and why am I talking to you about any of this whatsoever? Um, so, I'm Swift. Uh, I'm the founder of this little outfit called Major League Hacking. Uh, we run the world's official student hackathon league. Uh, so that means that every year, over 50,000 developers, students, all of them, get together at uh, student hackathons at the college level, at the high school level, the university level, uh, and they program. And we run the league around all of those events. Uh, some of the major league hacking crew from Europe is actually here. Raise your hands, guys. Yeah? Um, so this is actually my first time meeting a lot of these guys in person, uh, which I'm really excited about, and I'm really happy to be here. But before uh, I was with Major League Hacking, I was with uh, a little outfit called Hacker League, as Maddie mentioned. Uh, that got bought by Mashery last year. Uh, it was a platform for organizing and attending hackathons. Um, as an event organizer, there's a lot of problems that you face, and we solved a lot of those. Uh, still around today, it's still thriving and awesome. Uh, it's part of the Mashery offering. Um, I also used to work as a developer evangelist at SunGrid. I was their first evangelist in New York. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, you frequently will see the Sunry guys on the road, including Robin in the back there. Um, yeah, and then before that, I was at CrowdTap, which is a, another marketing company. So lots of marketing in my life, believe it or not. Um, so I think, I think I know a thing or two about this. So the first thing I want to talk about is how do we evaluate in-person events? So like you as an API company, you as a sponsor, you as like a mentor or a speaker, you have a lot of, of things presented to you. I mean, on any given day, there could be literally hundreds of conferences going on around the world. Uh, you probably go certain places for these t to find out about them, like meetup.com, Lanyard, Twitter. I used to do this thing where I had like a, a search permanently on TweetDeck that was like submit a talk because apparently only tech conferences use that language. So I could find all of the. That's actually how I found out about this conference. The first year I applied to speak was uh, I had a filter that caught it on Twitter. Um, but yeah, you go a lot of places to find events, and you have a ton of choices. So how do you decide uh, which events you're going to participate with? Well, I think that, that these five points. Uh, really boil it down. And I'm going to go into these in more detail. But the first one is, is cost per attendee, which I think is like a really important metric that a lot of us don't even think about when we're considering evaluating sponsorships. Uh, the attendee value, which is like who's in the audience. Uh, the sponsor landscape, which I'll talk a little bit about. 
um, the package value, so what you're getting, and then your gut. So let's talk about the first one, cost per attendee. Uh, otherwise said, bang for your buck. Uh, so this is the ratio of the, the, uh, the cost of the sponsorship or the cost of your time or involvement uh, divided by the number of people at the event. Um, and what you want to do is minimize this ratio. So the lower cost you're paying for attendee, the better. Um, so let's look at some examples. So the first one would be Dreamforce. So each year, 135,000 people participate in Dreamforce. Uh, the headline sponsorship of Dreamforce, and that's not just one sponsor who does this, it's multiple, costs $1.5 million. Now how do you know if that's a good deal? Well, you gotta look at it from a number of ways. If we look at it in terms of raw cost per attendee, it's about $11 per person who attends that conference. Uh, that's if you're the headline. Now, as you go down, obviously it gets cheaper. Uh, theoretically, the branding shrinks, right? So your exposure to the people attending the event goes down. Um, so you have to find some point in this function that maximizes the amount of value you're getting for each dollar that you spend with an attendee. So another example, uh, let's look at PyCon. Now PyCon is a much smaller conference. This is only 2,000 people. Now the headline sponsorship of PyCon is $50,000, uh, which is about $25 per attendee. You notice that's more than double what it is at Salesforce. And you would think that a conference that has <laughs> exponentially more people attending would be way more of a cost per attendee. Uh, but it's not actually necessarily true. Um, so when you're looking at these things, uh, you think, man, like, well, if I took that same amount of money that I was gonna spend on PyCon and I applied it to going to Dreamforce, that would be a much better value if you look at it in, ter in raw cost per attendee. That's true, and that's why you have to look at some of these other factors, and I, backing up a step, when, you t when I talk about these factors, none of them exist in like isolation. You can't look at these in a bubble. You have to look at all of them combined, and I think that uh, this is a good example of one where it's like you can look at two different sponsorships and one metric around them, and they can be completely different. Uh, now remember, you can think of this in terms of like ticket costs as well. So imagine you're not thinking about, about uh, like raw costs to sponsor the event, but you're looking at it in terms of like raw time or money used to actually attend this event, right? Um, so like take the prices that I'm doing for cost for the sponsorship and replace them with ticket value. Um, another good example, I took a random student hackathon. Uh, this one only has a thousand attendees, so we're still going down here, and yet our cost per attendee is going up. We're now at $50 a head. Uh, and I'll talk about why that, that's actually reasonable, but um, notice that these three things, like these two famous conferences and this like random student hackathon have dramatically different cost per attendees. So I think it's something that people don't look at. Now when you figure out what a cost per attendee is for your involvement, um, there's one thing else to look at with that. It's you wanna make sure that that number is less than what it costs you to acquire new clients. Now, if you're gonna sponsor an event and it costs you more money to sponsor the event per person than it usually costs you to acquire a new customer, you probably should look at another event. Let's be honest. Uh, not everybody does that, and I know a lot of people who end up in this situation where they spent a boatload of money on something they thought was a good idea, and if they would have done the basic math, it doesn't end up be correct. So, when you're evaluating opportunities, please, please, please know both those numbers and look at them. Um, okay, let's talk about number two. Um, attendee value. Now, what does that mean? Uh, it means that the audience, the people who are there. Uh, not only attendees, but also other sponsors, uh, the other speakers, whoever, anybody at the conference or meetup or event. Um, how good of a fit are they? Are they like actually people who could potentially be your customers? Or are they completely unrelated? I mean, I could go speak at a conference for pizza delivery people, but like I don't think I would get anything out of her major league hacking, right? Um, so, is the audience a good fit? How difficult is it to talk to this audience? Uh, so this is now like where that Dreamforce example comes in, right? Like Dreamforce tends to attract a crowd that is very different than the people you would see at a student hackathon or at PyCon. Uh, if you want to talk to only Python developers, then you probably want to go to PyCon. If you're looking to hire student programmers, then you probably want to go to a student, er, student hackathon. Um, so cost per attendee is not, again, does not exist in a bubble. It really depends on a lot of these things, like how difficult it is to talk to this particular audience. And then the potential is how much value can you get out of it. So uh, the sweet spot is right in the middle of your customers, your partners, and the attendees. Uh, in an ideal world, every person who attends the conference that you're getting involved in or the event that you're getting involved in could potentially become a customer or a partner for your business and help you be more successful. Um, so that's a sweet spot. That's usually not where we end up, truth be told. Um, often we're often like a side quadrant, which is okay, uh, but you just have to know what you're getting into ahead of time. And honestly, it's okay to be involved in events that focus on one of these things. Uh, I definitely got involved in conferences uh, as a representative of SunGrid where we were looking for partner opportunities and not necessarily to talk to the attendees of the event. Uh, okay, difficulty. Like, how difficult is this audience to reach? That's another thing to really think about, right? So 
one of like the holy grail of difficult people to reach is enterprise developers. Tell me if, if you have ever wanted to reach an enterprise developer, because I'd be willing to bet if you're an API company, I see people raising their hands already. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like everybody wants to talk to these people. I, I remember when I was an evangelist trying to figure out how to talk to enterprise developers, I would do things like go to the enterprise tech meetup, which is all people who want to talk to enterprise developers. It's not actually inter any enterprise developers at all. Um, so when you're thinking about the conferences or the, the attendees and like the value that they have and how difficult they are to reach, like think about where you would go to find these people. Um, it's often easy to find them on the internet. It's often easy to find them uh, in like groups that are specific to their like subculture. But uh, there are certain demographics that are really difficult to reach. I mean, another great example would be like something like Grace Hopper, like female programmers. Like that's you know unheard of. Um, so definitely keep in mind the audience you're looking at, and that could actually be a strong factor in why cost per attendee could be higher than usual. Um, it's not just the attendees. Sometimes other sponsors that make an event valuable. I mentioned before like. Looking at the other sponsors is another great way to like find opportunity in an event. Uh, maybe the audience is somebody you talk to regularly, but the people who are sponsoring could be somebody that would make a great partner. Uh, There's another one of those great ways to get into enterprise companies is to like find events where other enterprise companies are sponsoring and introduce yourselves to all the representatives while you're there. Um, so another thing to consider. Part three. Uh, this is a sponsor landscape. So three things to look at when you're looking at other sponsors is the quantity, the quality, and the value. Now I'm going to show you this slide. Uh, which of these is better? A big logo in a sea of other little logos, or just three regular medium-sized logos in an event? Uh, how many other sponsors are there? So are there a ton of other sponsors, or are you going to be one of three people highlighted? What's the quality of these sponsors? Like, do I want my brand next to Clorox? Maybe not. Uh, and the potential here, too, or the value. Uh, are any of these potential partners for me? Like, if I just picked, you have no idea how hard it was to just pick random logos and put them up on a slide, but uh, I started with companies that I would have worked with and then ones that I would want to work with and then ones that I would never want to work with, but uh, evaluating the sponsor landscape is another interesting thing to do. So how, how likely is any of these to become a customer, partner, or give you some kind of value? Uh, part four, package value. So this is what you're getting. So everybody who's ever sponsored an event or looked at like a ticket or like, Imagine going to a concert where you're evaluating like which seat to have. Uh, there's always like a little table that's like, oh, here's the cheapest option, and here's like little check boxes about what you get, and then like there's all these columns and tiers. Um, it's always really neatly laid out, but it's it's uh, never really as informative as it could be. Um, so like something to look at there is like what are you getting? And a really interesting question to, to ask is like what do the organizers value? And it's really easy to figure this out by looking at the tiers and seeing where the prices jump. Uh, one of the ones that you'll notice, you, there's a huge jump, is like speaking in front of a crowd. Uh, usually if you just want to like put your logo up on the website, it's pretty cheap. But if you want to like get up on stage and address everybody like as a keynote, that can be pretty expensive. Um, so you can look at the tiers and see where the value actually lies for the event and the organizers. Uh, you can also ask them. That's another thing that I've been doing recently that's, that's pretty interesting. It's just literally going to an event organizer and saying like, what is the most valuable thing you can give me? Because it'll tell you a lot about what uh, they think is important. Um, be creative in your sponsorships. This one is like key. Uh, honestly, like every person, every company that sponsors an event or gets involved in an event goes to a hackathon, every API that gets on stage and demos, like they're all doing the same thing fundamentally. You're getting on stage, you're giving a pitch and seeing if somebody will follow through with it. Or like you're putting your logo up and setting up a booth and seeing if people will come up and talk to you. Uh, the truth is the more creative you are and the more out of the box and the simpler you are when you talk as Tony demonstrated just before, uh, the more it can convert for you. So. Be creative, give away things like puppies, not really, but like make jokes and be funny and like have people th remember you. Uh, so be creative with your sponsorships. And, and remember, it's not only about event presence, but like doing things that surprise and delight attendees is key. I remember when we were at, at when I was working at SunGrid, uh, we would often look for opportunities to s go out of our way to help event organizers. So I remember being at countless hackathons where attendees were being underfed, going to Taco Bell and ordering like a thousand soft tacos to bring to the event, right? Uh, it's something that's like surprising and out of the box, and it brings a lot of value to attendees and, and organizers. So um, think about those things when you're evaluating opportunities as well. Part five evaluation is your gut. Use the force. Um, this one, like, when you're talking to an organizer, there's certain things you should look for. Have they organized an event before? If they haven't, you really need to do your research and ask them things to make sure that they know what they're talking about. Uh, how professional are they? Did this person just e cold email you a sponsorship prospectus or a random marketing email inviting you to come to their conference? Or do they like reach out and do the like, sales 101 process that everybody should know when they're doing these kind of things? Um, looking for key signals like that is pretty important. Uh, pro tip here, ask hard questions. Really, like if an event organizer can't answer some of these questions, 
then they probably don't know what they're doing. Uh, ask things like, how many sponsors do you have? Who's your biggest sponsor? What could go wrong between now and the event? Um, are speaking slots for sale? Like These are all things you can ask an organizer to find out the quality of the conference uh, and how it will affect you. Okay, so let's switch gears. Now we've evaluated all of our potential sp event opportunities, all the places we could go to sponsor, all the places we go to speak, all the places we could go to attend. Uh, how do we measure the actual value of what we got out of it? Um, so, fair warning, this is P equals NP of event marketing. Like, this is a really hard problem, as Tony alluded to, and there's not really an easy answer. I'm gonna give you a lot of things that are positive signals and some that are negative signals, uh, but the truth is, even if you evaluate all of these things, you're still never gonna know the true value of what you got out of an event. Uh, a lot of it will come down to gut, which we will see. So, the five things I use to evaluate events. Uh, real quantitative metrics, uh, vanity quantitative metrics, leads and partnerships, qualitative feedback, and your gut, which I talked about just a second ago. So let's start with real qualitative metrics. What are these? These are things like traffic and signups and usage of your API. Uh, these are all things that you can actually measure that show how a developer is engaging with your product. Um, again, fair warning, like a lot of this stuff, as Tony mentioned, is like if you're at a hackathon and somebody signs up, they might not become a customer for life. Like they might just use it that one time and then forget about your API forever. Um, you're gambling in a lot of ways, but like these are things you can look at when you're looking for positive signals. So a great one is Google Analytics, look for spikes. So you can measure your website traffic from a specific city for a month leading up to an event. I mean, you can look at it historically too, you don't even need to do anything special. And then you can look at it the, the month after you've been there and see if there's a bump in increase. I guarantee there's a bump in, in the number of page views, people going to Major League Hacking this week. Like it's just, I mean, it's a fact, it, I'm sure it happens. Um, you can do the same thing for events. If you travel to Paris to go talk at a conference, uh, you know, look at your Google Analytics for the month before, look at them after and see what happened. Um, give out coupon codes or special sign-up links. Um, this is like fairly logical. If you give somebody a special link to sign up for, you can track where you got them from. So if I were to give you guys all a coupon to like sign up for SendGrid or Twilio, then like, and you signed up, I would know that you saw me at this event because there's no other way you could get that coupon. Uh, also, a thing to remember is like if you have an API, giving away free credit is a great way to get people to sign up on the spot. Um, another pro tip is uh, th run an interactive contest or demo. So like, I don't know if anybody's seen the classic Twilio or Sengrid demo where like they get up on stage and they say like send a text message in or email us something. Well, guess what? Like whenever you receive those text messages or emails, now you have a unique email or phone number you can track over time and see if that person signs up for your, your service. Uh, it's really valuable and it, it's great for leads as well. Uh, you could also run a contest at your booth. Like I know those silly like fish bowls with, with business cards in them are, are ridiculous, but like it's a great way to track leads. If somebody from Orange Telecom puts a card in your bowl and then some, like three weeks later somebody from Orange signs up for your API, like guess what? I think they probably saw you at that event and thought it would be a good idea to sign up. Um, so contests, interactive demos, things like that, great way to track. Um, also, this is really easy and obvious and almost no one does it. How many people actually have a like, how did you hear about us on their sign up form? A couple of you, maybe? Yeah, well, this is a great way to like find out where your customers like found out about you. If they put like, I found out about you at API days, great, well you just converted a lead from API days to this that you didn't have before. Um, you could even like give basic examples like Google, an in-person event, like whatever. Uh, it's really, it's one extra question and the amount of value you can get on like actually tracking ROI from events is huge. Uh, this one's cool, and a lot, of, a lot of you will track API usage. I mean, that was a really obvious one. Uh, adding a special user agent to like your SDKs, tracking like IPs, like geolocating them. Uh, these are all ways to like get specific usage around what people are doing with your API and not just where they're from. Uh, I know Twilio does this like, they have like Twilio Ruby or Twilio Python and they have the version. I think Sengir does this now too. Um, but it's a great way to track what people are doing at events and, and what's picking up as well. Um, this is another metric to look at. Uh, it's, it's the average usage per sign up. So like take the total number of signups, take the, the total usage across all of them and, and for some given time period and calculate the average. Uh, you should be able to calculate that for any given user so you can figure out if like the users who signed up at your event are actually using your API or if they're like literally signing up for the hackathon and then ditching it, which is completely possible. Uh, vanity metrics, so these are things that like look good but aren't really that valuable. Uh, here's a good one. How many people have heard of Major League Hacking before? Couple, okay, so like the next time I come back here and I ask that question, if more hands go up, I now have a vanity metric to say that like me being here had some kind of impact. Uh, it's really easy to do that. Uh, estimate in-person attendance numbers, so how many people were here at this event. So, I mean, you could, you could do booth visitors or contestants or whatever. Track press mentions, use Google Alerts for this. I mean, it's pretty easy. 
uh, social reach, engagement, sentiment, like dump this into Google and there's a million tools that'll solve this problem for you. Um, it's Again, it's like a vanity metric. It, it's kind of interesting, but it doesn't really tell you much. Um, <laughs> we have Kurt from here who's, who's uh, from the MOH team who's been doing that a lot for us. Uh, Leads and partnerships, this is another really easy one. The number of business cards you collect at an event, uh, the partnership value over time. So like you can enter those leads into Salesforce and then as they convert over time, you can see how much those partnerships were worth. Uh, I remember like we used to track touches uh, at SendGrid and CrowdTap where like if we ran into somebody at an event, we'd enter their lead into Salesforce and then like over time if those leads like converted into customers, even if there's a salesperson who was assigned to it, like you can actually track ROI from events, which is great. Uh, pro tip. Uh, do something nice for other sponsors. You want them to remember you, uh, do something nice, like thank them for sponsoring the event. Like, let's give a round of applause for all of our sponsors today because they're awesome. <laughs> so be nice. Uh, four, uh, this is qualitative feedback, like how good was it? So these things are, you know, ask attendees for feedback. Like when you're walking around after the, uh, during the drinks, ask other people what they think of this conference. Like did they enjoy it? Is it a good time? I bet you they say yes. Um, but if they don't, then you have a good signal as to like the conference might not have been as good as you thought. Uh, ask the organizers for feedback, both on like what you're doing. I'm definitely going to ask Mehdi what he thought of my talk after this and how I can improve it. Uh, there's a, you know, that feedback you get is, is a great way to figure out how to get more out of events. Um, also, ask other sponsors what they think of what you're doing. I'm definitely going to ask Tony what he thinks of my talk, and I'm sure I'll give him feedback on his too. Uh, it's a good way to like figure out how to do, get better again. Uh, pro tip. Uh, negotiate for a post-event survey question. This is so easy. Most event organizers want to send out a survey. Uh, adding in like some kind of question about your API is a great way to like find out some kind of valuable information. Like, are you likely to? Ref I mean, I use NPS. Like, how likely are you to refer the service to a friend or colleague? I mean, you could use whatever you want, and it's so low barrier to entry for the organizers. It's like totally awesome and cheap. Uh, write an internal postmortem. This is really cool. I mean, uh, after each event I was doing with SunGrid, we were writing down like what we thought of the event, feedback on the organizer, feedback on like our actual sponsorship and what we can do to improve it. Even if you don't go again next year, you can look back on what the person from your company did. You can write it about events too. I mean, if you go to a lot of events, it's odds are you're going to forget some certain things. So just write it down. Five, your gut. Again, like this is all like it's completely arbitrary. These are all positive signals, not necessarily ne negative. Did the organizers deliver what they promised you? There's a bunch of times that that's not the case for sure. Uh, did the attendees meet your expectations? Did the organizer upsell you on who's going to be there? Or did you actually meet the people you wanted to talk to? Um, think about opportunity costs when you're evaluating stuff. Like, there are literally a million conferences going on every weekend. Like, is my time better spent elsewhere? Or is it actually valuable here? Um, OK, last couple minutes here. How do you get the most out of an in-person event opportunity? Um, so these are some pro tips that I have from actually doing this and watching people who are successful at it. I've only got three of these because I, I didn't want to do five. There's a lot. Um, but they are don't hide, be different, and make friends. These are probably the three most important things you'll ever learn as a developer evangelist. Um, so number one, don't hide. If you're sitting behind a booth, get out from behind the table. Please, please just do it. If you're sitting there, people don't want to approach you. But if you're out there standing in front, smiling, ready to shake hands as soon as somebody walks up, they're going to come talk to you. It's way more likely. Just watch it. Like literally go to a conference and look at the people who are standing in front of the booth and the people who are sitting behind it and count the number of people who go up to them. It's dramatically different. Get out from behind the booth and talk to people, please. Be different. I mean, yes, there's packages and tiers, but they're always, always, always negotiable. Don't do the same thing every sponsor does. Figure out what's valuable to the organizer and find how to do it. If the organizer wants you to sponsor like a meal or like a surprise snack or like a happy hour, like sometimes that stuff is way more valuable than just like getting the booth and the banner. Even like going into a conference as an attendee, like going to every session is like can be valuable, sure. But like figuring out ways to like organize a meetup at the event or like whatever can also be great ways to get value without having to like do anything hard. And then rule number three, probably the most important, make friends. Like the golden rule of developer evangelism is that you're in the business of making friends, not customers. Like if you see somebody at an event and you recognize them, you always say, hey, how's it going? Great to see you again. Try to remember people's names. Try to remember their faces. Try to remember what they do. Uh, all of those things will earn you brownie points. Everyone will, will think of you as that nice person who remembered them. Uh, it's a big, big, big deal, and like it goes a lot further than you think. So <laughs> shameless plug, if you're looking for great events to get involved with, uh, Major League Hacking, we have tons of awesome student hackathons. I promise I can change your mind about anything that involving hackathons. I know some people have had negative experience. I know some people have positive experiences. No matter what, I promise we'll blow your mind. Uh, that's it. Thanks. I'm Swift.
Hello, thank you for this uh, very clear and fruitful presentation. What is the last conference uh, event you remember and why? The last conference that I... Like, that you enjoyed. I went to. That you enjoyed and why? What oh, was the one, last one I enjoyed and why. Yeah, okay, and yeah. What, what was special about it? So, uh, last year I spoke at something like 52 conferences, something like that, which was ridiculous. And I had made a rule this year that I was only going to go to ones that like I really wanted to go to. This is my third speaking like speaking slot this year. Like I, I went from 50 to three, and, and it was like kind of crazy to do. But um, the three that I picked this year were like really special to me in some way. Like I really wanted to be here to like support Medi. I mean, like honestly, I, he said I was here like two years ago. Like I'm really happy to be back here. Uh, another like one that I did this year was this thing called uh, the Governor's School of New Jersey. It's a bunch of, they take the top students from high schools all over New Jersey and bring them together to talk about STEM and computer science. And I gave them a talk about how hackathons changed my life. I mean like that kind of stuff means everything to me. It's like being able to influence people and make a difference and give back to the people who have like been good to you. And so like when I'm thinking about opportunities these days, like don't get me wrong, Major League Hacking, we always look for opportunities that are going to bring the most value to our business. For me personally, like I'm looking for stuff where I can like give back and, and help support people who have supported me. Uh, hi, uh, is, are, there, um, are there things that event organizers could do to help um, potential sponsors and investors like better understand the value that they're gonna get from that event? Yeah, this one I love. Honestly, like, so the question is, in case you didn't hear it, like, how, what can event organizers do to give more value to sponsors or attendees or like whoever, right? Uh, I literally work with hundreds and hundreds of hackathon organizers during the course of the year. Uh, we run an annual conference that's just for student hackathon organizers, and it's like, last year we had 100 people show up. This year we had, we're gonna have 200 show up. We work with about 450 student hackathon organizers every year. Like, it's pretty insane. And so I give them the same bit of feedback, because all, the, the main problem that all of them have is like, how do I get sponsors or partners or people to show up to my events? Uh, the key is like, don't be formulaic. Like, every sponsor in this room has seen that ridiculous like, tables and columns prospectus that's like, a, basically a bill. Like, you're basically emailing somebody like, hey, here's like this bill for something you haven't even done yet, uh, which is ridiculous. Like, make them feel human. Like, if you were to email me and be like, hey, Swift, I see that you're really involved in student hackathons, uh, and you're really involved in APIs, I'm putting on this conference that brings together the best of both worlds, here's why you'd love it. Let's have a phone call. I'm more likely to answer that email, number one, and number two, like, I'm listening now. And if you can come up with something that's actually valuable to me, and you ask them what they want, and figure out how to deliver it in a special way that makes them, like, feel like they got something out of it, you're way more likely to convert. So we are we're setting up the panel just before, so we have time for one or two questions. All good. For, from the audience? Because I have a tough one to ask, but uh, maybe... You still have time to code. You still have time to code. <laughs> Do I still have time to code? Uh, I wish. Unfortunately, I don't. I play a lot more of a, a manager on support role these days than a developer role. But um, every once in a while, it does happen. It's just probably once a month rather than like once a week or anything. Another question. I have a tough question. Actually, not for you, but for me. Okay. So why? So no bullshit, right? Yeah. No bullshit. No bullshit. Uh, so. Why would you sponsor API days if you were a company, and why you would not now for di for this event that that you see and what you know? Yeah. Okay. It's, so it's a tough one. You have sponsor in the room. We have future sponsor in the room too. Totally. So. Ooh. <laughs> we okay back there? <laughs> okay. So this is a reason why not. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So why would I sponsor API days, and why would I not? So why would I sponsor it? Uh, if I was looking, when I actually, so the first time when we did this, I was at SendGrid and we did sponsor it. And I think SendGrid probably sponsored it again this time, although I'm not really sure to be honest with you. Uh, when I was looking for opportunities of, with events to get involved with, uh, I'd done a lot of like, my specialty was hackathons and meetups. Like that's what I was doing constantly. And I was really, really bad at like conferences. And specifically like, I was looking to get better at it and especially speaking part of it. So like that was what initially caught my eye. Uh, the thing that I've really found special about like API conferences and specifically the ones that you run in general is that you end up making like those friends that I talked about that are so important with like other people in your industry. Uh, Tony like alluded to this during his talk where he said like it, it, we don't compete over like developer evangelism, right? Like that's ridiculous. Like it's not secret sauce. I know there's companies out there that think it is, but it's not. The truth is like we all get better if we share 
like developer relations and developer marketing strategy. And like, if you want to meet the best people in the world to do that, that would be here. Uh, and so like, that's number one is like probably the attendees are like the kind of people that I like to, to jive with. Um, I mean, truth be told too, I mean, I think that like this is an audience that I can, can provide a lot of value to, and I think that if, if you run a developer tools company or you are looking for a way to give back to that community in any way, this is another great place to do it. Why would I not do it? Uh, in the same light, like while I love API conferences, like there is a like internal element to it. Like there's there's I think that there's like a fair number of them you should do during a year, and like honestly, this one in particular being the global event is probably the one I would do unless I was like stationed in a city that was having an API days. Um, but like, you can only do so many API conferences in a year unless you're a company like Mashery who like makes a product for APIs. Um, if you're like SunGrid or like Twilio and you're just an API that's like up here talking about like the best practices, which is great and thought leadership is super important. Um, you c I wouldn't do that every day of the week. Like you're, there's probably other events that you can like, it's the opportunity cost, right? So it's like, th is there a better like event I could be at at that time? And like, you know, maybe not, maybe yes. I don't know, it depends on the company. So he, he didn't say money, so we can raise the price. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's good. It's well, good. so you could definitely use the, all the stuff I talked about to evaluate like ticket cost here. As an organizer of an event myself, like and you too, you can use these tools to, like better understand like how sponsors decide to get involved, right? Like the truth is, everybody wants to feel like they're getting a deal, right? Do you think your sponsors are going to walk away and like feel like, hey, I got a deal there, I got the best value I could have gotten? I mean, maybe, right? Like that's your job as an organizer to but make it. Happen. I think they follow your uh, they follow your advice because they often want customized things. They want to be different. They want right. to. So uh, this is the, what we have to manage, and and actually they do it pretty well. But uh, yeah, I hope you you enjoy the event and as sponsor, as attendees, and as a speaker. The one thing I've noticed that like I this is totally tangential that I've learned over the last year. That's like my big takeaway for for 2014 is that everybody wants control. They want to feel ownership over the things they're doing. Whether that be as an attendee of a conference, you want to feel ownership over what you're choosing to, to listen to. You want to feel ownership over the people you're making partnerships with. You want to feel ownership over the sponsorships you, you choose. Like you want to feel like you have some element of control. And like as an event organizer, it's really easy to give that to people. Whether it be attendees, whether it be sponsors. As like a potential like attendee of this event, it's really easy to like, you know, make your, the, the business who's sending you here feel like they got ownership out of something if you bring back value to them. Um, that's one thing I, I've like noticed that I'm really proud of, and like I think it's something that, that's really interesting. And I mean, for all the major league hacking guys who are sitting in the crowd right now, like, you know, that's one thing we have to be really conscious of as people who work with event organizers is like, you know, we can have a lot of best practices, like you know, a lot of best practices around like APIs, and like the truth is we all do, and like we can share our insight with people, but like the best thing you can do is help them come to that decision th themselves, like give them ownership over the advice you're about to give them. Like I hope really what happens is you guys take all this stuff I just gave you and you don't spit it out word for word. I hope you extrapolate and make your own decisions based on this and like you figure out which events are like the right ones to be involved with based on these kinds of things. Thank you, Swift. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.